This is part one of a series of automotive videos that I'm doing using my Jeep Commander. At the end of the series, you'll know what tools you'll need in order to safely jack the front and rear of your Commander, and even how to change the oil and filter. If you have never jacked a car before, you're in the right place, because this video is going to explain what you should be looking for in a jack and floor stance, and why I opted to not use plastic ramps. And all of the tools and accessories that you see in each video will be linked in the description. I have a personal philosophy when it comes to jacks and floor stands, and that is, plan on buying more than you currently need. In other words, try to look for a jack that can handle at least 1,000 pounds more than your overall vehicle's weight. I think it's better to overkill it than risk your life just to save a few dollars. Most floor jacks have a standard resting position of 5 inches. That's measured from the floor to the saddle. If you have a car that sits low to the ground, such as a Corvette, then you would need a low profile jack. But for a small to full size SUV, a standard jack would work best. Let me make one thing clear right now. This Pittsburgh jack is built like a tank for its price. At 75 pounds, it's relatively lightweight and the rapid pump feature will get the car off the ground in half the time. Seriously, it's so buttery smooth to operate, I do believe a small child could lift my Jeep. I also like the fact that it has foam padding around the lower handle, which protects the car if you were to get too close. The saddle swivels, so you'll be able to make a flat connection onto your vehicle's frame from just about any angle. I also bought a rubber pad to help protect my car's frame from scratches or damage. To operate the jack, make sure the handle is completely rotated clockwise and start pumping. To lower, rotate the handle counterclockwise. One thing you'll need on hand is jack oil, because it's not included and the manufacturer does not pre-fill these all the way. And yes, you will need to bleed out the air and add jack oil before you use it for the first time. Now let's talk about jack stands. It's not the brand that you should be concerned about, but the load capacity. Whenever you're buying new floor jack stands, which come in pairs, the total weight is for both stands. In my case, I have two 6-ton stands, which means each stand can independently hold 6,000 pounds, 12,000 pounds together. The first thing you'll want to do when you get your stands is check the welding locations. If there are any gaps or weak spots in the seam, don't use it. Return them because the last thing you need is a floor stand to fail with you underneath the vehicle. And just like the floor jack, I decided to add padding for additional protection, and cut a 2x4 piece of pine wood in half to protect my garage floor. At its lowest setting, you'll need a minimum of 15 inches clearance for these stands, but they will raise up to 23 inches if needed. I definitely recommend buying jack stands that have a double locking safety feature like this one, so if the handle were to be bumped, the stand won't move. If the stand is already at its lowest point, then the safety pin isn't necessary because the tooth will be in the way. I chose the floor jack and stands over plastic ramps not only because it's more economical and doesn't require as much space to store compared to race ramps, but I've also heard one too many horror stories of cheap plastic ramps collapsing, and not once have I felt unsafe while working underneath my vehicle using these. For now, I think this pretty much covers everything you need to know about floor jacks and stands. Be sure to check the description for links to the tools, accessories, and other videos.